Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Take a Seat with G and today as you can see we are in a different setting. You know things have changed, change is good, it's the first of the month and we have a special guest on our couch so please help me welcome Blama. What's going on? What's going on? Thank you so much for coming oh, for sure. and thank you for being our first guest back from our like little yeah, I like, hiatus i like that i'm the first yeah. guest back loving it yes love it, love it already yeah. very happy so we're just gonna get right into the questions okay sure, so it. when did you fall in love with music oh uh, man i feel like as soon as i popped out of my mom like immediately yeah you know like music has been like a big big part of my life mm -hmm. my family's life my upbringing and everything like the like when i look at um like time stamps, like I always remember certain periods of my life by like certain songs. So I hear a song, it remind me of when I was four years old. Or I remember my sister going to karate practice or whatever the case may be. But as far as being an artist, I decided I want to be an artist since I was probably like in grade five, grade six. Okay. Yeah, making little freestyles, little dumb raps and stuff like that this tracks the Bow Wow and Lil Romeo and stuff like that, you know, so <laughs> you that, that was me. That ever got to them, the diss tracks? I wish it did. I wish it did. Uh, you never know, but it, it definitely helped me realize what I want to pursue in life and, and it, um, it got, got me to where I am right now. Okay. Right? Yeah. So. And I was just going to ask you, when did you like become an official artist? Like, when would you consider that you became an official artist? Officially, officially, I would say maybe um i would say like high school is probably like the training ground like i was i was still trying to figure out myself as an artist mm -hmm. um but i would say my early 20s i actually took it like super serious mm -hmm. and like um i was blessed to like end up going on like a couple tours doing shows around the world and stuff like that so that's when i was like yeah i could really when the kids stop you in the mall and say yo blamo can i take a picture that's when you're like yeah let me actually pursue this and really do it because you're, you're, you're helping people on their day-to-day. -day. People are telling me they're driving to work 6 in the morning and they're playing me to kind of motivate them through the day yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, if they could do it, I could do it. And I love doing it too, so why not, right? Good. Okay. And how do you feel like collabs ha and features have impacted your career? Um, super impacted my career because I kind of... Toronto, we all know Toronto's kind of a funny place. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Yeah, for sure. On in the, but, yeah. you know, I, I, I figured I would do things, like, a little differently. Like, um, I just look at things, like, uh, like marketing-wise. Okay. Like, I'm from Malton. Mm -hmm. So, it's, like, pretty much it borders Mississauga, Brampton, Toronto. Small, small little place, right? Yeah. And um, the, the brown community is huge, right? So, I ended up growing up with a lot of brown friends, Punjabi friends things like that so my producers happen to be Punjabi they would fuse hip-hop and their cultural sound at the same time so in my head I'm like this makes the most sense like I'm gonna rap on some Punjabi records they could jump on some hip-hop records we went back and forth so as far as like features and collaborations from that aspect it's had a super impact on my career okay super yeah, and I like that. You know, you're comfortable For sure. doing yeah. um, collabs because I was listening to your mixtape today. Okay. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of collabs, so we're going to yeah. get into that. Okay. So how do you feel like your sound has evolved within the years? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm at a point where, like, I love experimenting with new sounds and doing different things. Like, when it comes to, when it comes to hip hop music, I was straight bars. Like, that's my bag right there. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like anyone can out-rap me. Okay. I'll rap against anybody. As like, I, I love it. Okay. You know, like, I love the back-and-forth competition. Like, if we're doing a song together, I'm trying to kill you. You should be trying to kill me yeah. on the record. Because mm -hmm. that's only going to make the record better. Exactly. Right? So, I love it. But at the same time, I understand how hip-hop has kind of changed and, and there's different influences. So, there's a lot of um, melody being involved nowadays. Mm -hmm and um different type of beats like they're doing like uh what's the what's the sounds like sexy drill okay 
and um, I think it's called um, New Jersey Club Beats yeah. and stuff like that. And I love that stuff. I love all of that. But there was a there was a point where I felt like I was in a box where I couldn't I wouldn't be able to do that, mm. right? But started experimenting, and I, now I love doing that okay. type of stuff. So all the new music I have coming out is gonna kind of sound more on that kind of wave, mm. even though I know like bars is like the reason why I got into music in the first place. Yeah. Like it's a beautiful thing. Like you you should never box yourself in as an artist. And as an artist, exactly. Because yeah. so. So I was so we're gonna get into your mixtape because I feel like yeah. it was very when I tell you it was very like you are versatile. That's what I would consider you as. You're versatile. Yeah, you're not like you said. You're not afraid to try new things. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about how is it making the grime song slide again with Big Bird. Yeah. So that's my like that's my shout out to Big Bird. That's my super producer right there. Okay. Um, when I'm feeling like nah, I don't even want to do this music anymore. Like I'm in a rough patch of like i can't really think of anything he gets me into the studio he's like yo now we got to figure something out so um when we did that i think that's when like the, the grime the drill scene was like really really popping right uh this probably like during covid and stuff yeah. like that mm-hmm. so um he always wanted to sample jurassic park okay. so he sampled it um when i made the hook it was just on like a simple drum pattern mm-hmm. he sampled jurassic park and brought it to life I ended up having a couple of shows in the UK with him. Okay. And then um, by the time we're flying back, shout out to S with it. That's our artist in the UK. We're flying back. He reached out and said, yo, you want to collaborate mm-hmm. to like a couple of his brothers, promoters that we met out there. I, I heard his stuff and I'm like, yeah, for sure. I'm like, yo, we should put him on the sliding again record because like a drill type thing, you know, like, so it was lit. So he jumped on it, super duper lit. So. Yeah, that's one of my... I was actually playing that on the way here. Okay. You know, so that's one of my favorite songs after the after okay. Lil' Jet tape. Yeah. yeah. So, at first, when I first heard that one, because I was going through it, like, yeah. um, song for song, I was like, okay, Big Bird is from the UK. And then I heard Cannon, and I was like, whoa, hold on. Yeah, is he yeah. from the UK or not? Yeah, oh, Big Bird, no, 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 he's from here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's from Brampton. Okay, okay, because I was like, this is like, you guys are adapting very well, yeah. to, and it made it seem like he was from there. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on, is he is he from the UK? So I had to ask you, is he from the UK? And no, 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 he's from, okay. he's from here, but that's like, my, that's like my brother, like, we share like the same mind almost when it comes to the music thing, like, and he's really big on um, samples. Okay. So he's, he's uh, made records for French Montana, Chinks Drugs, R.I.P. to Chinks Drugs, um, Lil Durk. Uh, Wale, a few artists, right? He's had some placements with them and stuff like that. And the thing that they loved about him most is the way he's able to sample certain records. Like he'll sample Adele, he'll sample all types of stuff. So when we were actually making the project, I was like, Cannon was such a big song. When I was in high school, like Lil Wayne's song, like it was huge. So I'm like, let's redo that. And let's, let's figure out how to bring the old with the new and kind of mix it together, you know? Yeah. Okay, so you seem to pay attention to musical trends. Like I was telling you, you're very versatile. Thank you. So, what, like, how did this happen? Like, for you to be like, oh, okay, let me try this and try that. And, like, with, I know that was there trial and error? Were you like, okay, I might stay away from this because, yeah. you know. I mean, like, one thing about me, and I feel like every artist should feel like this too. There, you shouldn't have any type of real ego when you're in the studio, right? Like, I used to be a closed-off artist, like, nobody in the room when I'm recording, just me and the engineer, okay. right? That wasn't getting me to the point where I wanted to be because you need that environment. You need, you need somebody on your team to go, yo, that sounds terrible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you need somebody to go, yo, that's hard, you know, and plus, once you're in a fun environment and you have your people around, you're going to try new things. If you're an outgoing person, it's going to show on those records because mm. you have your people in the environment drinking, whatever the case may be, fooling around. Or if it's a serious record, they're super serious. Like, I feel like you need that energy, mm. you know, so that's all, all my se- all my sessions are like parties. I like that. Right. All of them. I might have to come and join yeah, the party. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I might get you on the song, yeah. too. Like, we might have to do that. <laughs> okay. So. Before, when you said you were closed off, like, was it because it was a fear? Were you, like, still, like, were you insecure about how you sounded? Well, 100%. Okay. I'm just now, to tell you the truth, probably, like, the last two years, 
I'm just starting now starting to really like my voice. Okay. So yeah. I feel like that's a that's a big thing that's within big like thing. creators. Yeah. Even me, I don't like hearing the sound of my voice when yeah. I watch over my interviews to yeah. like edit. I hate it. I'm like, okay, let's skip through. Yeah. So yeah. Like, so you, that was that was it for you. You didn't like hearing the sound of your voice. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, I was like, I would tweak it a little. Like I would hear other artists and be like, man, like I like how they sound. Yeah. You know. So I'd try to tweak it a little bit or change it or a whole lot of auto tune, even though I wasn't singing mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, but. In the last two years, when I've really been putting like a push on what I'm doing as far as an artist, yeah. I've been getting a bunch of "Oh, I love your voice." Even the girls like "Oh, I love your voice." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once the girls love it, I love it too. Okay. You know that's the that's the beauty. Of it. <laughs> I like that. I like you know? that. I like that. You listen to the girls. Honey. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you went through, like I said, different styles and vibes on your mixtape, the yeah. Little Jet tape. Walk us through that, and especially New Jet Swing. Okay, so that was giving, well, it was a, sample, a little sample of Bobby Brown. Yeah, 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 so yeah. how did you get to that level? Um, oh honestly, if, if I had like a, um, like a start, like if, if I could make a group, mm. it would be me, Future, Bobby Brown, oh. Max B. Oh. And um, shoot, there's another person. Now. I'm forgetting them now. There's definitely one more person. Whatever, I can't remember. Oh, Ray J. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that you need to you need to break it down. So this is giving B B B or whatever they had back in the day, but yeah. modernized. Yeah. So you uh, said you, me, Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown Future. Future. Max B, Ray J. Okay, walk. Why all of these people? I don't know. I feel like Max B is like the goat to me. Okay. Like I put Max B up there. Like that's my guy. Like everything. Like from singing when he's not really a singer. Okay. Like I feel like he was doing that before everybody almost. Right. So um, and then if you if you take if you fast forward, Future is pretty much yeah. the, kind of the same thing. Right, and me personally, my favorite music is like like um like the new Jack Swing music, like Bobby Brown and stuff like that. That's what I listen to when I drop out of Mandem home, and I'm by myself. That's what I'm listening to. Okay. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I'm like, but it definitely came from um. There's a Jar Rule and Bobby Brown song, and that's like one of my favorite songs. Like, um, hey, how's it go? I, can't even, I know you're getting bored. Dealing with him, I know you miss my love in my thug. You guys know that song. Don't make me sing it by myself. Maybe we'll clip it into the interview. I don't know. But um, that type of music right there, that's the music I love. That's the music I would want to make because it's just fun. Yeah. You know, like I was making a lot of street music, like strictly street music because, you know, um, naturally I felt like I was just a street artist. Right. Okay. You know, because I was just rapping on things that I went through, things that my homies went through, mm-hmm. things that happened in the streets. But I'm like, anybody that knows me knows that um, there's two sides to me. There's that side and then there's the other side that's like fun and outgoing and, you know, just wants to see everybody happy and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, nah, I'm like, I got to do something like that because it's out of the box. No one's expecting it from me, mm-hmm. you know, and I got to show the other sides of me. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm actually working on the heartbreak side of me, like all types of shit, like you know, like that's what I, that's what I want to show. I want to show the world everything. Are we gonna hear a little bit more singing from you? A little bit, uh, not too much. Okay. I don't want to go too far. Away, yeah. But I can hold a little note. Okay. The engineer does it right. <laughs> you know, I can hold a little note. Okay. All right. So, what was the inspiration be- behind outside? That was oh, it was giving me vibes it was giving it was giving me the vibes of like you know what the girls want yeah. if you want to have a little ratchet night out yeah. very sexy red very city girls oh, you know you were you're catering to you were that's what i'm saying you are very within what's going on you're observant you watch what's going on and you're like this is this is like perfect yeah. for a summertime yeah, for and sure. what the girls want to hear right now 100%. you know yeah when when i made that record um I was actually working with a few female artists that mm-hmm. I'm no longer working with, but I actually made that record for them. Okay. Like, I just wanted to um, just do it as a reference or whatever and let them 
take it over. I'm like, yo, this will be big for the girls. I'm thinking like Glorilla, Sexy Red, like Lotto. Like, there was one point where I was really listening to them and I'm like, yo, they're killing the game right yeah. now. You know, so um, things didn't work out with those artists, but honestly, I was gonna, um, I was gonna do a big remix okay. with every popping female artist in the city. I want to do something like that. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because whatever reasons, like, I don't know, right? But the city, exactly. Yeah. But I feel like it would have been a huge look. It would have been crazy. The record's crazy. And um, I don't know, but that's a record. I'm not letting that go to waste. I'll take no. it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was for you guys, but you guys don't want it here. And there's always a... You can always make a remix. Like, there's always time to bring it back. Oh, you know, yeah, like a deluxe or yeah. something. Yeah. Most definitely. Okay. Okay. No, that was. I was like, okay. What I was like, okay. This is. Yeah. This is. This is definitely staying in my playlist. That's what's <laughs> so. What's one of your songs that you think is timeless? Oh, that's a good question. Timeless. 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 Automatically. Automatically, I would go to um. A record I have called Get It. Okay. Like, I feel like the stars just aligned with it. Mm -hmm. It was so simple to make and everything just worked. From the time I heard the beat, yeah. I made the hook. I went inside the studio. I didn't write the verses. I freestyled the verses. Yeah. Put it together. Done. That was it. Yeah. Easy. And the thing, the thing I like about it too, even with that studio session, my homeboy had brought three girls to the session i didn't know them okay. from anywhere they're sitting down i'm playing the, i'm playing just the hook i just had recorded the hook i'm playing it like this and then after playing it like two three times i'm looking over to the side and they're in their phone and they're like get it get it get it get it like they know the song already yeah. right even if they didn't like the song it's already in their head like they yeah you know and by the end of the session they're like no this is hard like yeah. i've been singing this like for the whole session like it's stuck in my head i left the session it's still stuck in my head yeah. you know so i feel like it's just a fun it's a super fun record um has a little dance to it you know so it's like it's one of those things i feel like you could play that anytime like anytime birthday party the kids love it mm. your bottles are coming out for your birthday in the club it's ringing off yeah. over there yeah you know and what, what are we talking about what are we trying to get it could be anything you're trying to get yeah you know like you just got that new job. Get it. Get it. Get it. You're trying to get that new girl. Get it. Get it. You're trying to get the old girl. Get yeah. it. Get like it could be anything, you know? So that's I think that's one of that that's for sure the timeless record. Okay. Okay. All right. So how do you prepare to make like your own music? Um It depends. It really depends. Um if we're to actually it doesn't really I just gotta be lit. I kinda gotta be lit okay. to be honest. Like, you know, like some liquor in the studio session or whatever. And I have like key friends that they don't have to be there, but I love them to be there just cause like I don't know, it's like it just gives me that vibe that I need to be in that energy. Mm -hmm. You know, so once I do that, it's over with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like cause at this point, like at this point I'm actually like the most comfortable we're making music that I've ever been. Okay. Like something's coming out of every session. It okay. doesn't matter if I have 20 minutes at the end. Okay, bet. I don't have enough time to record a song. I'm going to do a little freestyle and put it out. Yeah. By the time I get home. Okay. You know, so, yeah. Okay, and what has been your favorite performance? Favorite performance? So far. That's a good one. Um... I gotta think about that one. Favorite performance. Off the top of my head, I would say in the um the first show I did in the UK. Okay. Cause it was just so lit. It was such a like a um like a shock for me. Like this is my first time in the UK. Okay. I touched down. Um the 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 sprinter vans coming to pick me up. Mm. I'm in I'm in the airport. My um the person that handles my YouTube stuff, he's back home. He's like, yo, I, uh, there's a song I have called Who What? Right? He's like, yo, the video's done. Do you want to drop the video right now? 
I'm like, bet I'm in the airport. Let's drop it. Boom, we dropped it. I got to the um, I got to the hotel, ate some food, went to do a BBC interview. Okay. Got to the venue, started performing. People are singing in the crowd. Damn. You know, I'm like, we just dropped it. We just dropped this a couple yeah. hours ago. We dropped this like four or five hours ago yeah. or something like that. And you guys are already in tune, like, to what's going on. So I'm like, nah, this is lit. Super lit. So. And one thing I will give the UK, because honestly, I love the UK. Yeah. Whatever people say over there, that's their thing. But when it comes to music, yeah. the crowds over there are different. Oh, for sure. Because they definitely, they even have their own scene out there. Exactly. Like, you could yeah. be an artist from the UK and never have to go anywhere else. They'll but, take care of you. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I feel like Europe as a whole is like that. Yeah, 100% like, Europe, I don't yeah. know if you've ever been to France, but one thing about me, I love French music. That's what made me start, like, this whole thing. Yeah. So, French, like you said, they have their own thing going on over there. Yeah. They don't need what we have over here. Yeah, not at all. Over there, once somebody once somebody picks up like once people are like their music, you get that support immediately. Yeah, sure. And yeah, then sure. their shows are sold out. Like they be doing arenas out there, easily, and they can't do that over here. Yeah. But because they have the support over there, yeah. they're like, yeah, we're good with what we have over there. You yeah. know. So that's why I feel like the UK is the same. Yeah. They have their own industry. They have their own vibe. Yeah, their whole and market out there is a, is a, is amazing. And that's what I'm saying. Take care of their artists. Wish I I'm still wishing because I'm not losing the faith, mm. but I would hope that Toronto becomes like that one day we, we for our to. own people. We and that's to. what I'm trying to do yeah. for our own people. Yeah. I feel like we need to, I don't know what it is that we need to do, but we need to support each other yeah. more, especially the people that are in the industry. Yeah. You know how the Toronto industry is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's disappointing at, at some point. It's even hard to get people up here mm -hmm. because you're not in a certain status as of yet. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just praying and hoping that we find we get there one day, and I hope that yeah. I could be the one to make to start an impact in the city For sure, when it comes yeah. to like and, stuff and like that. That's why we got to give you your your flowers as well because there's a lot of people that um they could put that first foot forward and do something, but they're worried about the naysayers. They're worrying about a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like even to bring it back to me, when I first um started doing um crossing over into the Punjabi markets and stuff yeah. like that. I had a million friends saying, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, go do it with the Spanish people. Like, that's cool. Like, go yeah. do it. Like, you see, like, Pitbull, like, the whole, uh -huh. like, go do something like that. Or yeah. maybe Japanese or blah, blah. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? I'm like, I grew up around all these people. They all listen to music. Exactly. Why would I not do that? This exactly. is in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Right? But then later on, everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, because they, they got see, their own thing going on. They see Sweetie doing doing the Punjabi song. Yeah. They see Tory Lanez doing the Punjabi song. And now they're sending them to me. Like, oh, look, they're doing the same. I'm like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. you kind of have to have that vision for yourself. Exactly. Pursue it. Forget what everyone else is. Exactly. No, no 100%. Yeah. 100%. So... Are you working on any collabs and can we know with who? Collabs at the moment. Yeah. Um, honestly, no, not the more. I have a I have a couple of features I'm chasing after. Okay. Yeah, I have my management um talk to a few other managers and stuff like that. And if we can make it happen, it would be beautiful. Positive you know? vibes. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah we got, we Manifesting gotta, it. We definitely gotta get it done. Um yeah, a couple of big names. We're okay. in talks with good. You know, so so you don't have you don't have to tell us now. We gonna yeah, manifest yeah, it, and it's gonna keep it. yeah keep it keep until it happens. Yeah, yeah. Sure. okay, yeah. I'm down with that. All right, and if you could call up any artist right now to collab, just anybody, who would it be? Hey, Fifty Cent. Oh, yeah, I need a yeah. That's it for me. Honestly, like there's certain like I collab with um Jim Jones in New York. Okay, that was a big thing for me too. Right, like we did a song together. Um, a Fifty Cent record, I could just, I right, cool, take the yeah. mic off, go sit down. You're done. I could just go sit somewhere. I don't yeah. gotta do nothing. I don't care about the money. I don't care about none. I go sit in my room, watch that video a million times. And it's over. And that's it. Yeah, cause that was a big part of the reason I even started this. Okay. You know, big part of the reason. Mm -hmm. So Fifty Cent, if yeah. you're watching this, yeah. holla at your boy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we got to play it together. <laughs>
If not a record, just put me on a but show or on something. The, I like, want to be in an episode two. Okay? That's it. Like, something. Like, you know? <laughs> I want to be in an episode if it, two. If you kill me in 20 seconds, just let me get <laughs> two lines in and we're yeah. done. We're done. Yeah. I'm here for that. Um, how about Toronto artists? If you haven't already, are you like thinking of anybody you'd like to work with in Toronto? Um, I mean, I did want to work with a lot of the female artists, but the experience I went through kind of left a like a sour mm. taste for me a little bit, right? Can touch on a little bit of the experience. You'd have to say names. No, for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't say any names, but um, I mean. You're familiar with the Toronto scene. Yeah. The five most popping female artists in uh-huh. Toronto uh-huh. that you're thinking of in your head right now. Yeah. I reached out to all of them. I don't know if they thought I was trying to swerve, if I was uh-huh. trying to, but got left on red, got left on scene. And the crazy thing about it is I'm coming from a place where if I perform or if I feature on a record, I get paid, uh-huh. right? I would never try to reach out to somebody that I don't have like a personal relationship with and and not pay them. Yeah, exactly. Right? So everyone was getting paid. Anyone that was on the record or anything, they were all going to get paid. Mm. As far as the big budget music video that I was going to do, I was going to pay for that. Exactly. So all you had to do was show up, bring your bars, you know, exactly. and do your thing. That's it. Get some money in your pocket. And whatever the case may be, if the if the record works, it works. If it doesn't work, you got paid. Exactly. At the end of the day. Doing what you love. Exactly. You know, so. And if it doesn't, if the record doesn't work now, you never know in a few years it might pick up. It might pick That's up. That's how the world works now. Yeah, for sure. Like, See how TikTok is going. Exactly. A song that could have been years ago is coming back now exactly. and it's trending. You know, but um, ah uh, man, in the city, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of keeping my ears out mm. for a couple artists, but um. At the moment, now nah, I'm kind of just like focused on my own thing and like, like chasing other features. Not to necessarily say like there's anything wrong with them, but like I'm kind of looking at my playlist, okay. you know, and like new artists that are coming across my plate, and then I'm saying, oh man, yeah, this is hard. I might want to reach out to them, okay. you know, kind of thing. So, but I might have an artist that you want to work with, yeah, and I'm an A and R, and that if that works out. Oh, for sure. So, okay. Right, so we'll put something together. Okay. Sure. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so what do you... Th- already we touched a little bit on the, you know, Toronto music scene. How do you feel about it, though? Like, let's get into it. Because I feel like... There's a lot to talk about in Toronto. Yeah. We have great talent, and we have great we talent do. here. Some of the greats come out of Toronto. They do. Okay, Canada as a whole. How do you feel about the music industry here? Um, I feel like, I feel ultimately it can happen. Mm. Like we can have the infrastructure and everything that we want. It's just that we're focusing on the wrong things. Mm. You know, like, I feel like Instagram is like what we use as to see who's popping. Okay, yeah. Like the Instagram blogs, yeah. like who are the Instagram blogs po- um, posting. Mm-hmm. But personally... I know a few artists, like me myself, I'm not the most popular artist in the world, but I know that I've made a pretty penny off of doing music in different ways. Mm. There's a lot of other rappers out there that are doing the same thing, making money, um, touring, doing these festivals, all types of things, but they're not getting posted on these blogs all the time, right? So I think when we stop making the blogs the main goal and the main, like, source of who's popping and who's not and we start looking at other things then it'll be way better mm. like way better but um we know what's going on right now it's like it's the drill rap mm-hmm. shout out to all the drill rappers i love it to death yeah. you know what i'm saying like because some of them are very actually very creative yeah. like they might be saying things that are kind of like crazy like oh shit yeah you might not want to say that or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. but some of these records, if you if you look past that, super creative records, super catchy records. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I feel like we're as far as Toronto hip hop, it's like we're still a baby. Okay. Yeah. You know, we have we have space to grow. New artists are coming out every single day, and not only that, even more than we can't put it all all on the artists. We gotta get some executives over here. Okay. 
like we need that person that says you i don't want to be an artist but i want to put some money into a label mm -hmm. i want to put some money into um a different type of blog i want to put some money into a podcast i want to do these type. i want to put money into a, a, like a festival yeah you know we need those people i feel like we have enough artists to 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 kind of get it done but we just need the people behind the scenes to pull yeah, through for sure and to believe in the vision yeah, yeah. that's it mm -hmm. i don't think we have any of that yeah i don't think we have the diddy that's looking at biggie like oh shit like nah you gotta you gotta i'm gonna lock you in the studio i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do you know what i'm saying i don't think we have any of those kind of people or we don't have enough of those type yeah. of people yeah you're yeah. right i haven't i don't think we have those people yeah Unfortunately, even yeah. though whatever's going on with Diddy, we want to, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Diddy's <laughs> in the hot seat right now. Yeah. But um, we don't have those type of people yeah. around right now. Hopefully, yeah. you know, I can become one oh, for the sure. right way. For yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> you know, and we just work up to it. Like even uh, um, even uh, like I like I said, I love bars. Um, like battle rap. Mm -hmm. I did a um a battle rap tournament in yeah. April called Big Bring Your Bars. Okay. Eight thousand dollar grand prize, right? Um, Four thousand came out of my team's pockets, and then while we were doing it, shout out to Hoodlum, um, a rapper from the city. He jumped on Instagram live and said, "Yo, I see what Blam was doing. I'm gonna put up a thousand dollars." Yeah. Shout out to Twenty Fifth Dynasty. They do um, grab uh, and all your weed accessories. Yeah. They seen what was going on. Said, "I'm gonna put up a thousand dollars." Yeah. You know, like uh, Presser's manager seen it thousand dollars so we got to eight thousand yeah. dollars right and um this was a this was a like we got to put this in perspective this was a toronto battle right these are two people on stage yeah. dissing the hell out of each other yeah. with their entourages bar bar. every single hood in there yeah. no violence yeah it's about the music yeah yeah nothing bad happened mm. everyone was telling me don't do it it's gonna be mm. crazy we had like 350 people in there yeah Somebody won eight thousand dollars that night. No violence, no nothing. It was beautiful for the city, and that's just me and a couple people on my team trying to put something together. Imagine if we really do sat down and really tried to do something. It'd be crazy. We need to do that. Yeah. Count me in, man. Yeah. For I'm, sure. I'm in that. Um, what's been or what's been the most memorable moment in your career so far? Most memorable moment. I would say the Jim Jones collaboration. Yeah, that was that was a big one for me. Like we're in the middle of Queens, New York. Were we in Hart? No, we we're in Queens. We shot it in Queens okay. at my homeboy's um sneaker store. And I'm just in there. I'm chilling. Whatever. I don't get starstruck. Mm. Right? Like I'm not really a celebrity run them that me personally, I just wanna like if Fabulous walked in the room right now, I would just look at him and go, Oh shit! Yeah, you're a real person, and yeah. then I, and then I'm over it, yeah. you know. But yeah, so when Jim Jones, walk, I see all the dipset chains, I see everything, blah blah. I'm looking, I'm like that. I'm like, yo, I grew up on your music, and now we're doing a song together, like yeah. crazy. I'm spitting bars. I see his head. He's doing the ugly face, like oh, this nigga can rap type yeah. shit, you know. And it was just crazy to me. So I don't do the fanatic stuff. Like I didn't want to take pictures or nothing like that. My my dogs took pictures and stuff like that. But I just went up to him and I just I said, yo, I, I want to let you know, like, I grew up on this whole thing you guys made. Like, yeah. this dipset thing is part of the reason why I'm doing this right now. Mm. You know? And he's like, yo, good looking, boom, boom, whatever. And we kept it like that. We went to the party strip club afterwards. It was lit. Like, yeah. I love New York. If I wasn't, I feel like moving to New York, to be honest. You do give me the vibe. Yeah, like New York. Yeah, culture. you even have the voice deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. New York is definitely the vibe. Cho I would eat a chopped cheese every single day. I'd be in the strip club. I'd have a strip. I I'd have a stripper girlfriend. She'd be stripping. I'd be working on my music. You'd be okay with a stripper girlfriend? I mean, the rappers go to the strip. I fell in love in the strip club. Okay. That same night, I fell in love. <laughs> but I fell in love. But you fell in love. But would you? No. Would exactly. But in the moment, they were playing the Future and Drake song. Yeah. Everything like. Our eyes connected. I fell in love for like probably like thirty minutes. Yeah, absolutely. No hate to the strip culture. Love it. Yeah, yeah for but sure. But it's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. going on. But it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot to like 
I don't know if Take that's in. yeah. For sure. Okay. <laughs> um, what would you do? Like, what what's one thing that you would change in the music industry today? Not to run like at the whole music industry. What's one thing that you would change? One thing I would change. Honestly, sometimes I even talk to my, my homies and my manager about this. I feel like people have enough money to kind of, like when you see like seasoned artists, right? Mm. And man, I don't want to bring him up again, but Diddy. It's he's all good. It's all going good. Through he, a lot. <laughs> he's, he's going through a lot, but he's, we know what Diddy has done for yeah, the music for industry. Yeah, sure, 100%. So honestly, it's, it's, it's bound to happen. But before all of that happened, I used to look at, um, like an artist or producer like him, be like, you have all the money in the world. Mm. What's stopping you from making music that sound like that music that you used to make? Oh, okay. Right? Even like R&B artists and stuff like that. I feel like everyone's chasing the new sound. Yeah. But I know they're not making music to, to make money. They're making money in so much other ways. Yeah. So why wouldn't you just... I don't know, like, why can't, like, a 112 or a SWV come out right now? Like, mm. e even in the R&B game, like, there isn't really, like, real R&B anymore. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Tyrese just recently said that the R&B R&B field right now yeah. is very, um, what's the word? They are, is it shy or something? He said it, he said it, and I was like, you know what? You're actually right, because he was talking about, he mentioned James Brown back in the day. He's like, yeah. you know how many hip hop artists sample James Brown, but James Brown would never bring a hip hop mm. artist on his record. Yeah. I'm like, it doesn't have that. Like, music comes and goes so fast nowadays. So fast. Like, I don't like the, the, there's a, I don't know if it's in the production. I don't know what it is, but like that feel when I was growing up, it's kind of missing. Like, I find it in little bits and pieces here and there. But before you listen to the radio, and there's like 10 hit records and none of them sound alike. Mm. Like, it's like you couldn't cookie cutter uh, a hit record. Yep. And when you heard Jadakiss spitting, you knew it was Jadakiss. Yeah. Just off the voice. When you heard, when you heard Biggie, you knew it was Biggie. Like, yeah. you know, it was just different. Now everyone kind of sounds the same, same, same cadences, same ad libs, yeah. same, you know? So that's one thing. I would bring the, the originality back. Yeah. That's what I would bring back. You know? I agree with that. All right. And this is the last question, but we're going to get into a game. Okay. But since we are in the last quarter, yeah. what are some, what goals do you want to accomplish by the end of this year with your music? By the end of this year, um, periodically I've been putting out um, a few uh, freestyles on Instagram. Okay. So pretty much um, I'll be in a studio session. And I'll wait till there's like 15, I'll wait till there's about 30 minutes mm -hmm. left of the session, right? And it's almost just to like train my mind type thing, you know? So in that 30 seconds, 10 minutes, I'll write a freestyle. Like I'll pick a beat, write a freestyle, okay. right? Um, in, the next, in the next 20 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever the, the case may be, yeah, 15 minutes. I'll um, try and record it as best as I can. Even if I just have a couple of notes jotted down, I'll try to record it, freestyle some of the bars, blah, blah. Like, that's to keep the, um, the feel of it. And most of the time when I'm writing it, it's about something that's going on at the moment, mm. right? Like a thought that I had that I had to get out, right? And, and it's been more on the reminiscing vibe and sentimental vibe and type shit like that, you know? So... I'll do that. Five minutes is left for the engineer to play around with it. Engineer says, yo, what are we calling it? If my, if my homeboy is here, I'll be like, yo, it's called a conversation with homeboy. Uh -huh. Or it's called um, Dufferin Street because mm -hmm. I, I found a beat on Dufferin Street. Yeah. Or it's called 9 p.m. because we finished at 9 right. p.m. Super organic type of material. Yeah. So Instagram's been loving it because I've been doing more of the catchy music. So people be like, nah, you got to get back to the bars and stuff like that. Right. So I'm like, bet. So before the year is done, I want to put out an EP with just that type of music. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it, it gives like, um, like, you know, when Drake is in his, like Drake timestamp yeah. type music, you know, yeah. when he's in his bag and he's just rapping, yeah. the singing is done, nothing. Mm -hmm. He gives you like one of those almost every album. Mm -hmm. 
it's almost on that type of vibe soul sample on the beat things like that so i definitely got to put out an ep with that type of music and that type of music strictly and um what else by the time by the time the the year's over um well, i got to put out some girl records for the girl i got to put out some lady records i put a i put a um a snippet on my gram the other day the girls were going crazy I was like, nah, I gotta cater to the females and stuff like that. You know, whether it's like really lovey lovey or if it's a little toxic lovey or whatever the case may be, I gotta do it. Gotta do it. I gotta get into that bag now. So you guys heard it first. We're gonna we're gonna hear more of girls. Yeah, for sure. For the girls. Okay. All right. So let's get into our game. Let's do it. So I'm excited. Yeah. We're gonna play one artist, one song. Okay. And so basically the rules of the game, I'm going to name you an artist and you have 10 seconds to either sing, rap a little verse yeah. of that song. Okay. Don't think too hard. Just have fun. Got you, got you, got you. Because I know how pressuring these games can be. Yeah. Don't think about it too much. No, no. Okay? Yeah. All right. I have that. So yeah. for the first, because you mentioned Jim Jones, so we're just going to start with Jim Jones. Oh, Jim Jones, the first artist? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> we fly, no lie, you know this. Bowling. Nah, outside, it's like showbiz. We you stay, yeah, that? that's all I got. Okay. I that <laughs> um, 50 Cent. 50 Cent? Uh... Why is it so much harder? This is my favorite artist. Why is it so much harder when you play the game? This is crazy. I'm saying, don't think about it too much. You yeah. know. You say that you're gangster, but you never pop nine. You say you a wankster, and you need to stop fun. Go to the dealership, but you never cop nine. You've been hustling a long time, and you ain't got nothing, damn, hey. homie. In hey. high school, you was the man, homie. Hey. Fuck happened to you. No. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So far, you're doing so well. Yeah. All right. Um, throw maybe as a random. Hmm. Sexy red. Sexy red. Shit. How that song go? Get it sexy. Get it sexy. <laughs> Get it sexy. Get it sexy. Girl, you know that. Super. All right. Throw it back. Was that one life she has on that other side? She like. Um. I ain't no scary ass bitch. I'm a hoe. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, I go. Yeah, I focus. I focus sexy red. I don't like my niggas hate it. I'll bump that sexy red in the car. Like I'm working crazy with the sexy red. I'm all for it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm trying to see who you like. It's off the top. Hmm. Okay. Jay Z. Jay Z. Man, Jay, I fuck with Jay too. Um, somehow, some way, we gotta get up out the streets someday. Somehow, some way, we gotta get up out the slide. So shit like that. I don't even know. So shit like that. I fuck with Jay. This is, this is a hard game. I don't know. Beyonce. Beyonce. I'm still in love with you. You made me win. I can't do this thing with life without you, baby, because I'm dangerously in love with you. i never leave. If I could rip my shirt off, I'll rip, climb the table, I'll do all of that right now. Okay. I'm on my R&B, R&B vibe right now. That's okay. why I can't really remember the rap stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm on my R&B shit. Okay. Know? Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown? I can't sleep at night. I toss and turn. Listen to the telephone before I get you. Nah, 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 nah. Can't believe you call my own. And a matter of fact, close your eye. You wouldn't even <laughs> talk to me. E. A girl like you. E. Like dream come true. A real life fantasy. No matter. I'll go all day. Yeah. I'll go all day with that. Shout out to Bobby Brown. Take. Okay. No, Ray J. Because you brought him up and I was shocked. So, Ray J. Ray J. If I had one wish, you would be my boo. Oh. Promise. Can we get some rated here? 
promise to love you if I had one wish. That's my shit right there. I had to take off the glasses for that one. You know? Oh, banger, banger, yeah, banger. Yeah, that's a banger right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then Drake. Drake. Um, what was that? I was listening to some Drake on the way here. What was it? Shit. I don't even know. Oh, you got so, you got a new one that um. I'm watching the moves, playing it close. S O D. Super soap. Some song and then and then matching coats. Then and then and then and then then and then some new shit. Have you seen his his burner account? Have yeah. you have you listened to the songs that were on there? Yeah, that was one of them. I actually loved like and that's that's like that's something I've been wanting to do, like the the little snippets of like in the studio and shit like that. Cause I love that shit that he dropped, like the hundred gigs or like random shit like it's cool to see like he's sitting down um trying to make hotline bling and he's saying little things like yo i should put future on this or mm. blah blah and you're seeing the record come together i love that type of shit like the behind the scenes like i feel like every artist should just have a full archive of that type of shit for mm. sure so it's dope that he has that from that long ago and he still has it now mm. i try to do that but i lose phones i lose hard drives oh. i get locked out of emails like okay maybe you might need somebody to handle that yeah all right i was gonna say random question why do you think everybody is hating on drake right now like especially the artists do you think it's fake i don't think it's fake i really don't think it's fake i feel like i feel like it was a lot of fake love from the beginning like i feel like they probably didn't even really fuck with him but it's like, nah, you got to go get a record from that guy. Uh-huh. You know? So they, like, oh, what's up? Like, showed fake love to him. He's doing a whole bunch of favors, giving everybody hit records and stuff like that. But behind closed doors, like, they didn't want the Canadian light-skinned guy to be winning. No way. They did not want him to be winning and be winning for this long, 15 mm-hmm. years. Like, 15 years that a Canadian is running the whole American market, UK, everything. I don't know. What's wrong with them with the Canadians? What's, what's, what's going on here? As I, have no, I have no idea. Like, because there was a there was a point, like, they're starting to see it now. There, there was a point in time they thought we didn't even have no no hoods over here, or no type. They thought we were in igloos. Crazy. You know, Crazy like, hoods over yeah, here. they didn't even, they, they didn't think, they thought it was all white people. They thought it was just, like, suburbia mm. like you know but i don't know now that it yeah like the internet is bubbling now so it's like you can't really hide from it like everything is there for you to see you know so not to glorify anything but like there's street shit everywhere there's rough shit everywhere like everyone's going through it in their own ways mm-hmm. and their own struggles right so it's kind of ignorant to think that America is the only ones that literally. Been I'll say maybe that's what's wrong. It's one thing that's wrong with the music industry. They think yeah. it's just America. Yeah, for and sure, that's definitely. you know, so they got their flaws in there too. Yeah, but you know, we still love you, Drake. Yeah, for sure. You Shout put out. us, you put the city on. So I'm always gonna, you know, fuck with Drake. Yeah. For so sure. For sure. yeah, but you did very well. Thank you. You you know the game. You did very well. Thank even, you. but thank you so much for. A Taking a seat thing. with G. Thank you. And you're always welcome to come back. Yeah, we gotta. I got definitely gotta come back. Yeah, definitely. Whenever you drop a new project, come back visit us. We want to be a part of you making your new music. I want to be in the studio. Oh, I want to sure. be. I want to be there. For sure. You know. I actually had. This is September. For, I'm not sure when this episode's coming out. Okay. But I actually just opened up my own studio. Ah, <gasps> congratulations! So I can say that. I can say that. Right yeah. Know, I don't really for it yet, but by the time this comes out, I'll probably already made the announcement. Yeah. Like that. But for sure, definitely, anytime, and maybe we could do an episode over, over there. there at the studio, yeah. Yeah, or behind sure. the scenes. Yeah, definitely. Something. Oh my god, I'm so glad that you are the first artist back from my little hiatus. I'm glad too. So thank you so much for coming and sitting down and taking a seat with G. No problem. And guys, please go follow him. Go subscribe. Go listen to the music because it's really good. Thank you. Okay? And I wouldn't be just lying. Great. It is, the music is good. So go get that. Support. 
a nice Toronto artist, you know. And yeah, we're hoping to see more of you. Oh, I'm just saying, gonna see a lot of so, you. Cause remember, I gotta make the girl, the lady song. The lady song, song. Right? yeah. So ladies, you're gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to get used to this. Yeah. You know what I'm, saying? We're, we're do, I'm doing it for you guys now. That's it. <laughs> and we're here for it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And yeah, see you in the next episode. Later.